Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and it worked. How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? Uh, you're toying with me, right? Wait, you're not kidding, are you? That's the only way you could have known. You're a bit like... Oh, what was his name? Sisyphus. Yeah, that's the one. Old King Sisyphus. Sisyphus was a Greek king a long time ago. For daring to think he could outsmart the gods, he was given a terrible punishment. He was forced to push a great boulder up to the top of a hill. Only, just as it reached the top, it would roll all the way back down to the bottom, forcing him to start over and over and over again for all eternity, just like you. Actually, now that I think about it, there are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. Tantalus was made to grasp at fruit on a tree he could never quite reach. The Bellides had to keep fetching water in a sieve. Oh, and Ixion was strapped to a wheel going round and round forever. But on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. Anyway, I don't know which god you managed to upset to get yourself into this position, friend, but you seem all right to me. So, I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you, and you just focus on finding a way to break the cycle you're in. Anytime, friend. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Although, it's not as if I'll remember this next time we talk anyway, right? <laughs> oh, and if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. I know when I'm not wanted. May fortune smile on you, friend. Hmm, a golden bow, just like Apollo and Diana. Salve. I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? Then you are an explorer like me. Wonderful. You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Hello? My name's Dooley. I live here now because I got in trouble and they... They said they had to lock me up. I don't know. I don't remember things so good. I think it's just because I was... Looking for treasure. Yes. But I wasn't. But I was just looking. They said I did it. More than once. 
but I can't remember things so good. Then they called me mean names. They called... They called me a liar, Billy. Yes. They said I have to live here now, and gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you... Do you think you could read it for me? What does it say? Uh, my treasure! My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said he always would. But then, he died. It was very sad. He said, if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the cisterns. But when I went up to the high one, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius and Ek. The priestess lady. She's a nice lady. Bye bye. Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. What business is that of yours? Willow Bark. And this will work? Oh, thank God. Finally, some relief. This is what I've been praying for. Maybe God hasn't abandoned me after all. Thank you. I've been... in a lot of pain lately. The rheumatism, these cursed statues always watching in the... crisis of faith. It was too much. Started messing with my head. This is exactly what I needed to set it straight again. I owe you one. Can't talk long. Got to stay sharp, but... Uh, family's from Seleucia on Tigris. Babylon province. But I've been roaming a long time now. Even joined the legions. The sixth. The one they call Ironclads. Not sure. I was fighting with the Sixth against Parthians in the East. 
Only my whole body was aching every time I took a swing of my gladius. It was the rheumatism. Relentless. Unending. Of course, I wasn't going to get any sympathy from my commander. So I started thinking. What if, in the next battle, I just didn't try as hard, you know? What if I let my guard down just long enough? Next battle came, and all I remember is this bloody great savage coming toward me. And I just loosened my grip, and then nothing. I woke up by the river. Some strange man in an eagle headdress had fished me out. Kamut Tabal, I think he called himself. Then I found this place and that's it. That's all right. It just feels good to finally tell someone about it. Thanks for listening. No, I don't. I did hear a rumor that Aurelia, the tavern keeper, has been offering to sell a way out. But I barely have two sistersi to rub together. Hmm. I'll tell you this much. I hate the fact that my survival depends on the common sense of other people. I mean, all these people just bumble along like nothing's wrong. Well, we're one bad decision away from being wiped out. Like the last lot of people who lived here. Don't you just Seems like I'm time? the only one ready for what's coming. Whatever that is. And when it hits... It's everyone for themselves. You've been warned. I don't know. But did you ever get the feeling some of these statues are watching us when we're not looking? Like they're waiting for something. I don't like it. All weapons are to be tossed into the chasm. Magistrate's mm. orders. That doesn't help me. See you around. The 49 melodies fetch again with incessant labor. Hey, you're not thinking about going into the cistern, are you? Nobody's told you about Hannibal? Ugh, why do I have to do everything round here? So, there was this guy called Hannibal, right? Funny accent. Used to go down into the cisterns looking for junk he could clean up and sell. One day, a few weeks back, he comes out and tells me the cisterns are haunted. 
Said he could hear spirits wailing. Of course, nobody believed him, because who trusts a Carthaginia, right? Anyway, a few days later, he goes back in. And hours go by, and he hasn't come back out, yeah? So I go down after him, and it's dark. But in the distance, I can just make out his body sprawled out on the ground, and hunched over him was something that made my blood run cold. No word of a lie. I saw a creature. Like the corpse of a man who'd been flayed. And it was eating Hannibal. What any sane person would have done. I legged it out of there and put a sign at the door to warn the others. Well, it's your funeral. you. Thank you know you're here. You have to help me escape before that monster comes back. I'm Centilla. I found a way out through the Gate of Horn, but it's locked. So I told him about it, and instead of helping me escape, he locked me up. He wants to keep us all here forever, or until we're turned to gold. He's a monster. You have to let me go so we can kill him and take his key. Sentius, my adoptive father. Furies help me. I'll castrate and crucify him. I don't know. He said the gods are on his side because they don't want us to escape either. I 
don't know. He said the gods are on his side because they don't want us to escape either. Behind me, there's an aqueduct tunnel bringing water from outside the city, so it should lead us outside. The only problem is it's barred by a heavy locked gate, and he has the only key. I'm going to take that key from around his neck, even if it means cutting his throat to get it. I'm done caring about the golden rule. I just want out. Help me, and we can escape together. There won't be enough time. Just you and me. What do you say? Thank you. Now follow- Wait. Did you hear that? He's here. He must be coming in through the door behind me. You distract him. Stay right here and keep him talking while I look for something I can use. What did you do with Centilla? Where is she? So that is how it's going to be. Oh well, this doesn't change anything for me. It's a shame, really. If you'd just done what you were supposed to, you'd have been looping through time forever until you gave up and killed yourself. Just like that soft-hearted pleb, Al. Come now. Surely you didn't think you were the only one here who remembered everything. You see, my connection to the portal somehow preserves my memories from one loop to the next. Whether that was Proserpina's intention or a happy accident, I'll never know. But I'm surprised you hadn't noticed. Here I was, thinking you're a little bit sharper than Al was. Or perhaps you're just more willing to break the rules. He was a moralistic fellow, never once compromised on his principles. And because of that fatal flaw, he relived this day many thousands of times before we finally had this conversation. I watched him come through the portal each time, always a little older, a little more disheveled, a little more haunting. And when he finally saw the futility of it all, as you're about to, it broke him. He drank a jug of wine, tied a noose around his neck, and took his own life just before he was shot with a golden arrow. The next time I awoke, you showed up. But you, you've caught up to where he was so quickly. I'd have preferred if you'd given me more time to enjoy the trappings of my success. How many extra days did you give me? Just the two? Not many. But don't worry, I'm sure there'll be another useful idiot who comes along after you're dead. In any case, there's no escape for you except the path that Al took, the path he wrote about on his tablet. What was it? Ah, yes. Better to end it all now than find out what awaits you beyond that portal. So, you discovered my secret. So what? What are you going to do about it? Isn't it obvious? Because I have grown attached to all this. My title, my beautiful villa, the sun on my face, the music of birds chirping. And as long as this day keeps repeating itself, I get to enjoy it all, over and over again, for eternity. Don't you see? I have found a way to prolong my life indefinitely, to cheat death. I have become, in effect, as immortal as the gods. Can you honestly say you would not wish the same for yourself?
Of course, there's no way you could have succeeded. Every soul who has ever found themselves here has broken the golden rule eventually. It is inevitable. Man will always sin sooner or later. Any idiot could tell you this. But where others might see tragedy, I saw opportunity. As I told you the first time we met, I found a way to cheat death. By reliving the same day over and over again forever. And I will continue living long after your dust. Do you really think you can take on a Decurion with that flimsy little bow? Who? Centilla? Where is she? I'm right here, Father. shall suffer for the sins of the one. Come on, we have to go. Hey, what's happening to you? That light, it, it's so bright. Afraid. Thought I was in here alone. I'm Al. Well, here I am. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Really? That's strange. I was just reading an old tablet I found here. Well, trying. My Latin is kind of rusty, but the last entry mentioned someone with the same name. It described an event about 2,000 years ago. Someone with your name appeared in the city out of the shrine of Proserpina. Freed an imprisoned woman named Centilla, who then murdered her captor, breaking some kind of ancient law. It said the attack caused golden statues to come alive, hunting down everyone in the city and turning them into gold. Apparently, the only person to survive was Centilla, while the stranger disappeared in a flash of light. Uh, what? You're saying you were here 2,000 years ago. I... I'm not sure I understand. Uh, I'm sorry, come again? Um, let me see that. God, why does this writing look so familiar? I've spent a lifetime in this place going around and around in circles. This is... Uh, this is disturbing. But I don't understand how I could have written it. I, uh, I'm not following. So you're saying... Because a man from 2,000 years ago is dead, he never created a time portal, so I never went through it, and that's why I don't remember any of this. I guess you saved my life then, as well as helping that poor woman to escape. That's a lot to take in. Maybe we can escape through the same aqueduct Santilla used, if we can find it. I'm gonna pause here for a moment and make sure nobody else is ever lured into this temple. You go on ahead, and I'll be there soon. I was beginning to think you'd both become trapped in there. Why don't you tell me what you discovered? While we wait. Really? Sounds amazing. And did you... Oh! Look! Here he comes! Al! It's so good to see you. You were gone so long I thought I'd never see you again. Kinda lost track of time in there. You wouldn't believe what we found. The ruins of a long-forgotten city. 
and there was a tablet describing an event 2,000 years ago. Supposedly, the city was destroyed when a woman murdered a tyrant with the help of, well, my new friend here. I know how crazy that sounds. Maybe not that crazy. That woman. I don't suppose her name was... Centilla? How could you... What? She left a tablet of her own. I stumbled across it while I was waiting here. I think she meant for you to read it. Here, take a look. I don't know what became of you, or if you'll ever read this, but I want you to know that I will never forget you, or what you did for me. It pains me that so many dear friends were not so fortunate. Ulpius, Sentia, Lucretia, Horatius, Galerius, poor Dooley, and the others. But please understand, their blood is on my hands, not yours. I will live with the consequences of my actions, and all I can do is move forward, trying to show others the same compassion you showed me. I promise you that saving my life will not be for nothing, Centilla. Sounds like you meant a lot to her. I'd love to hear your story, but first... You two look exhausted. Why don't you hop in my boat and rest while I... ferry you back to civilization? Sounds good to me. And you? Are you ready to go home? Never persuade him of anything. I'm telling you, he's a monster. Please. You're making a mistake. You're allowed a weapon. No, I'm not. Citizen, we're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? We have? 
Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the golden rule, forcing me to create a portal in time to bring you here? I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only, I assume we failed, and you had to start over. Is that about right? If so, what happened? Ah, I see. Look, it's unfortunate, but all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you've sought me out again for a reason. Me? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, you remind me of him. Al, Al Worth, the fellow who came through the portal before you. Come now, surely you didn't think you were the only one here who remembered everything. You see, my connection to the portal somehow preserves my memories from one loop to the next. Whether that was Proserpina's intention or a happy accident, I'll never know. But I'm surprised you hadn't noticed. Here I was, thinking you were a little bit sharper than Al was. Or perhaps you're just more willing to break the rules. He was a moralistic fellow, never once compromised on his principles. And because of that fatal flaw, he relived this day many thousands of times before we finally had this conversation. I watched him come through the portal each time, always a little older, a little more disheveled, a little more haunted. And when he finally saw the futility of it all, as you're about to, it broke him. He drank a jug of wine, tied a noose around his neck, and took his own life, just before he was shot with a golden arrow. The next time I awoke, you showed up. But you, you've caught up to where he was so quickly. I mean, you've lived through the day. What, only three times? Extremely impressive. And yet everything you've done has been in vain. Because there's no escape. Except the path that Al took, the path he wrote about on his tablet. What was it? Ah, yes. Best to take your own life now. So, you discovered my secret. So what? What are you going to do about it? Why? Isn't it obvious? Because I have grown attached to all this. My title, my beautiful villa, the sun on my face, the music of birds chirping. And as long as this day keeps repeating itself, I get to enjoy it all, over and over again, for eternity. Don't you see? I have found a way to prolong my life indefinitely, to cheat death. I have become, in effect, as immortal as the gods. Can you honestly say you would not wish the same for yourself? And why would I agree to that? You might want to think that through. If anyone so much as touches me, everyone dies. Ugh, you and your pathetic morality. Nobody cares about your opinions, least of all me. Understand that, to me, you've never been anything more than a useful idiot, and you're no longer useful. The only way you're getting this key is over my dead body. And if I die, 
I won't be able to open the portal for you again, meaning you'll have created a paradox. You see, it was my actions that brought you to this point in time. So if you kill me, you'll stop me from doing so. And you being here will be an impossibility. That means if I die, you'll be flung back to your original time, having caused the deaths of everyone here, and you'll never be able to undo it. Is that what you want? I certainly hope not. In fact, I want it to go on and on forever until you wither and die like Al did and the gods send yet another useful idiot to extend my life for me. What are you going to do? Beg the gods for help? <laughs> they don't care about you and neither do I. Now, get out of my villa. I'm bored with you. Isn't the great temple majestic? A new face. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Well, I suppose we'd first need to figure out which god that is. And I'm afraid even I don't know. Although I have my suspicions. This might sound like a strange question, but please, humor me. How did you find your way here? Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed odd to you. You do? Well then, have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember and see if you notice any patterns. Good. Thank you. But please, be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you, too. Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive member of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty, always seeking out newcomers and asking them where they were from and how they wound up here. Ah, and then, a fellow about a month a ago, land. she suddenly changed. She withdrew, stopped working and became despondent, started muttering to herself. Galerius and I visited her to see how we could help, but she just looked at us with this haunted stare called us bloodless shadows and told us we were ignorant of some pattern. Look, it could be unrelated. Perhaps she simply fell ill. Or, as Galerius suggested, the weight of the golden rule was too much for her. But there is a small chance that she learned something, saw a pattern nobody else saw, and that it broke her. I just don't want to see that happen to you. So be careful, will you? Thank you. Now, go and follow the thread of truth through this labyrinth, and come back to me if you discover any patterns. Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors. Feeling all right? I'm Lucretia, and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm tired. Oh, can't... My husband and I moved to Rome from Caesarea. He embraced the Roman way more than I would have liked and turned into an awful philanderer. I would have divorced him and demanded the return of my dowry, but I knew he would sooner have me killed than give me my right. So I waited for the right time to take what was mine and disappear. And then the fires came. As he prepared to evacuate our villa, 
I gathered our most precious belongings, coins and gemstones, and the moment his back was turned, I ran. I could barely see for the smoke, and the streets were full of people trampling each other. I ran for the river, like everyone else, and leapt in. The next thing I remember, I was waking up on a riverbank, not far from here. It's all right. Say what you will about this place. At least my fornicating husband will never find me. And while there's no shortage of snakes here, at least with the golden rule, they have to try to be discreet about it. Gladly. Shiny. You... you took care of him? An accident? So... it's over? Oh, God. That's such a relief. I really thought we were all going to die. I... I do have a question, though. That shrine, the one I was going to hide in, did you... know it was going to collapse? So you... kind of... murdered him, then? The many shall suffer. I should probably keep my big mouth shut. Sorry. I promise, nobody else will ever know what you did. But I know. That was really clever. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Oh, speaking of which, welcome. I'm Fabia. Sorry I was a bit frantic before. Need anything? Oh, there's not much to tell. I mostly just bake bread and try to help out where I can. I suppose it all started about eight months ago. I was living in Rome with my family when I got sick. Terrible timing. My pa had just arranged a husband for me. A fisherman's son. I was about to meet him for the first time when I came down with an awful fever. I spent the next week in bed. Pa paid priests to make offerings to Asclepius, a white rooster, then a goat. But nothing worked. In the end, they decided I'd do better outside the city. Clean air in the countryside would do me good, they said. But after about a day in a carriage on the Appian Way, I was getting worse, not better. I remember closing my eyes for a bit, and I guess I must have fell asleep, because when I opened them again, I was in a forest by a river. I suppose the driver took off with his fee and left me for dead. Can't say I blame him. I wouldn't have wanted to catch what I had either. Anyway, I went searching for help, stumbled across the trapdoor temple, and here I am. <laughs> it's nice of you to say, but you should save your sympathy. Lots of people here need it more than I do. What? You've been here a few moments and you're desperate to get out already? Why not give the place a chance before you try to leave? Good people here. Galerius works hard on the farm so I can put food on our tables, and Lucretia tries to keep us healthy. My friend Georgius is always mending our clothes, and Virgil makes sure these old walls don't fall down around us. Well, he... he does his best. I'm just saying, there are worse places you could live out your days. Well, I can tell from your funny accent you're not from around here, but that doesn't mean you don't belong, does it? Oh, I try not to worry about it. I mean, if people are nice to each other, we won't have anything to worry about, will we? Thanks. And I like your teeth. They're so white. And your clothes. Oh, I bet my friend Georgius would like to get a look at you. And I'm sure he'd love to chatter about the golden rule with you too. He'll be just across the forum, in his shop. All right. Thanks again for... taking care of our problem. I won't forget it. Still a bit out of it. Galerius just saved my life. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest.
You mean my life story? Oh, well, I grew up as part of a big family in Rome. Me and three older sisters. Our father found good husbands for my sisters, but I wasn't uh, cut out for that kind of life. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. It was a good life for a while, until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I worked desperately to try to protect our warehouse. We must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan, but they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless and it claimed everything and everyone. Well, almost everyone. My employer told me to grab what valuables I could and flee for the Tiber with the crowds. I remember diving into the river and then... The next thing I knew, I was waking up on the riverbank not far from here. Thank you. I consider myself fortunate. At least I'm still alive. All right. Goodbye. Citizens, we have a quarate body of voters gathered here to elect the city's magistrate. Candidates are Sextus Sentius. Hail Magistrate Maliolus. <sighs> I said, Hail Magistrate Maliolus. That's more like it. Thank you. Thank you. I am delighted and deeply honored to have been elected your magistrate. And now, I make this solemn promise to you, good citizens. Under my leadership, you will finally enjoy the freedom you deserve. No more shall you walk on eggshells, fearing simply to live and breathe, because the tyrant Sentius told you it was forbidden. For my first act as magistrate, I hereby announce a day of celebration to mark the end of an era. The myth of the Golden Rule is no more. The Golden Rule is real, you idiot. For his attempt to deceive us all, Sentius is hereby found guilty of treason against the Empire. What? I have committed no crimes. This is madness. His sentence? To fight for his life in gladiatorial combat against Domitius. Here and now for your entertainment. You have no idea what you're doing. You're going to get us all killed. Wait. I exercise my right as a Vestal Priestess to pardon him. I will not allow you to do this. You're showing your true colors now, Priestess. Your corruption sickens me. Domitius, ignore her. Proceed. This is insanity. You do us all. Lies! It is time the Golden Rule was exposed for what it is. A children's fable, exploited by a treacherous leader to instill fear in all of us. This is why he's in his gladiator gear. They've been planning this all along. Shut up, all of you. The Magistrate has spoken. I'm going to enjoy killing you, old man. The many shall suffer for the city. Again, did you find what you need? And did you notice anything? A pattern? Yes, I suppose that could be something. 
But then most of us do tend to carry coins on our person, don't we? What else? Yes, I understand many of our friends were carried here by a river current. What else? That's true. I know I wasn't entirely sure how I wound up here. It's as I feared. I think I understand what ah, poor Livia has been going through. You land. mentioned earlier you met a young woman in the forest named Karen, yes? I see. And was this Karen by any chance wearing a hood? Because I've seen her before. There's something I think you should see. I think you'd better follow me to the baths. But don't follow too closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. You're here. You were asking how I knew the young woman you met by the river was wearing a hood. Here, look down at the bottom of the baths. It's a little hard to make out in this light. If only we could see. Oh, what a marvelous lamp. But do you see it? Somebody waking up by a river in a forest to find a hooded figure with a coin. It's just as you described it, only your pronunciation is a little off. The name you heard wasn't Karen. It was C-H-A-R-O-N, as in Charon, the ferryman of the dead. Charon, who in exchange for the right coin, helps the souls of the newly deceased cross the Styx, the river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, but all I found was some loose change. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that... I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. There are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. But, on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. I'm so sorry, my friend. I'm so, so sorry. I take it you know what this means. I'm afraid so. It's all starting to make sense. All these people whose last memory was running from the fires toward the river. It seems none of them escaped with their lives after all. Perhaps we should be grateful they don't remember their final moments. It also tells us that the Golden Rule is the work of Pluto, the god of the underworld, and why his epithet has always been Father of Riches. I know it's a lot to take in, and you look as if you have questions, so I'll try to answer them if I can. That was my first thought too. In the old stories, the underworld was where the souls of the deceased were taken. But it was also possible for the living to reach it without dying, if they were particularly fearless. So I'm afraid I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you're not from here. If you were Roman, or even Greek, you would know these stories. 
each of them is slightly different, whether the storyteller was Plato, Homer, Virgil, or Ovid. But they always involved the souls of the dead, meeting a grim ferryman named Charon on the bank of a river. It was said that he'd help the new arrival cross only if they could pay him with a coin, an obol. That's why it was once our custom to bury our loved ones with a coin in their mouths. Charon's obol, we called it. Of course, an obol was a kind of Greek coin, because we inherited this knowledge from the Greeks. To be fair, the ferryman isn't exactly as the poets described, and he, she, they, they seem to appear to different people in different guises. You say you saw a young woman named Karen with a hood, and I once heard Kabash mention a stranger in a ram headdress named Kirti, and Rufius described meeting a stranger named Kamut Tabal wearing an eagle headdress. But whatever form this stranger took, they were always wearing a hood of some sort, and their name always began with a K sound. I suspect the only way you'll solve this riddle is if your paths cross again. Good question. Let's see. In the stories, Charon would always require a coin as payment for passage across the river. But that never made any sense to me. What does an ancient immortal being need with coins? In our case, it seems Charon didn't take the coins we had. He or she merely checked we had one in our possession. So, maybe there's something special about the coins each of us had on us. That might explain why we wound up here, but so many others did not. No. I mean, I had my suspicions, especially after Livia's ramblings, but I would never have figured it out without your help, I promise you. Now that we know where we are, we have to figure out what to do about it, if we don't want to be cast into gold for eternity. We don't have much to go on, except the old stories. I remember four in particular about heroes in the underworld. Hercules, the demigod and son of Jupiter, Orpheus, a Thracian poet, Sisyphus, a king of Ephyra, and Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Hercules was able to leave the underworld because he cowed its god with his strength. Sisyphus and Orpheus both relied on their wits instead. They persuaded the goddess of the underworld, Proserpina, to help them escape. And finally, Aeneas was able to escape with the help of a spirit guide, who led him through a secret gate. So it seems you have two options. To confront the god of the underworld head on, or find a way to escape with the help of Proserpina or some other guide. That option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn the truth about the Golden Rule, and maybe even put an end to it. As I said, Hercules managed to overpower the god of the underworld, but he was a demigod. Forgive my candor, but you are no Hercules. Are you telling me that you can? I won't pretend to understand exactly what that means, but if that's true, then perhaps you stand a chance. So, if you want to confront him, I'll help you as much as I can. Who knows, perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sentence as Hercules one day. But first, you'd need an audience with you-know-who, and for that, you'll need to enter the great temple overlooking the city. The problem is, the door has been sealed shut for as long as I've lived here, and there doesn't even seem to be a keyhole. I suspect the answer lies in the desecrated obelisk in front of it. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there are four plaques missing from its base. It looks as though somebody, or a series of somebodies, forcibly removed them, 
and in doing so, dishonored and angered our Divine Keeper. If you could recover and replace all four of those missing plaques, I imagine he might be willing to receive an audience again. It's the towering stone monument with four sides and a pyramid-shaped head that stands before the great temple, a dedication to the god of this place. You'll find them all over Rome, but of course they were looted from Egypt many years ago. It seems one of them made its way here too, although how is a mystery. However, this one is unusual in that each of the four sides is decorated in a different style, Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and another I don't recognize. That means you'll need to recover four different plaques, Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and a fourth, a mystery plaque. Good question. To answer that, we first need to ask who would have defaced the obelisk in the first place. It would have had the god's name engraved into it, so it may be that whoever desecrated it wanted that name to be forgotten. And there's only one group of people I know of who might want to do that. There's a cult in Rome that often argued there is only one true god. Theirs, of course. They've been known to start fires, as well as deface religious monuments whose existence challenged their beliefs. If I were you, I'd go looking for them. Of course, they've all been in hiding since the fire last year, so finding them won't be easy. But I did hear a rumor they have a secret shrine somewhere in the city. Perhaps, if you could find that, you might be able to recover the Roman plaque. I don't know. But perhaps you should begin your search with the local Greek fellow, Georgius. His store is in the forum. Perhaps Kabash, our Egyptian resident, will be able to tell us. Unfortunately, he disappeared weeks ago. But I did hear Aurelia is peddling rumors about him at the tavern. So, perhaps you could talk to her. Or just take a look in his room. I'm afraid you're on your own with that one. But perhaps finding the other three will illuminate the way. As I mentioned, both Orpheus and Sisyphus were said to have persuaded Proserpina to help them escape, and Aeneas was guided to the exit. The problem is, those are the stories of a poet, a self-aggrandizing king, and a brawler about their own heroic deeds, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. First, Proserpina. What we do know about her is, well, it's a grim tale. It's said the god of the underworld abducted and dragged her here against her will, forcing her into marriage. If the stories are true, then I suppose so. The problem is, how do we communicate with her without being noticed by her captor? Leaving that aside for a moment, there is also the possibility of a spirit guide. I don't suppose you've come across one of those in your travels? Truly? And you're only bringing this up now? Then again, I suppose you were worried I'd think you were as mad as Navia. Can you tell me more? Is it the same voice? What kinds of thing does it say? Fascinating. Perhaps she is a benevolent spirit, or perhaps... Hmm, perhaps you're hearing the voice of Proserpina herself. If she has indeed been abducted, it would make sense for her to speak in cryptic whispers to avoid detection. Tell me, has she told you anything that might lead you to the way out? Truly? Then why are you still here? Ah, oh, I see. Then it seems you have made a great sacrifice for all of us, friend. I admire your compassion. Truly. Thank you. But unfortunately, I'm afraid your only other option will be to confront... you know who. All Romans try to avoid saying it, and the reason is quite simple. He might hear us. You may refer to him as... 
Pluto, if you wish, but you'll only be calling attention to yourself. Do so at your own peril. All right. I would suggest not discussing this with anyone. The best we can do for them is to let them remain oblivious for as long as possible. As for Livia, it seems she's been shouldering the weight of this terrible secret all this time. Perhaps it would comfort her to know she's not alone. In any case, time is of the essence, so you'd best begin. May Fortuna guide you. Although you may not need her with Proserpina on your side. Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls. But it does not notice the crowds that come. Say it. Speak its name. Then it is true. I was right. I thought... I thought I saw it, but when the rest of them could not, I kept thinking I must have gone insane. I had to tell myself it was true over and over again, until I wasn't sure if I was deceiving myself. I must apologize if my words seem cryptic. I found comfort in reciting the Metamorphoses by our great poet Ovid. He gives such an uncanny description of this place. I cannot help but wonder if he himself came here. Would you like to hear it? I will do my best to remember the relevant verse. There is a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. The sluggish Styx exhales vapor, and by that way, the shadows of the newly dead descend, entombed with full rites, and the ghosts of those, at last, given proper burial. The wide, thorny waste is cold and pallid, and the newly arrived shades are ignorant of the road that leads to the Stygian city, where Black Dis has his cruel palace. As the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls, and is never too small for any populace, nor notices the crowds that come. There the bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. And still others incur punishment. I hope I have done it justice, and now we share a secret. It's as if you've lifted a great burden from my shoulders. Oh, thank you, friend. I think I should rest. Lovely to see you again. Can I help you with something? Even if I had 
had seen it, and I'm not saying I have. I couldn't in good conscience give it to you. That's all I'll say. What you're doing is disgusting, and it's not going to work. Shame on you. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Another The forty nine melodies fetch a game with incessant I Wait, how did you know I was headed in there? No time to explain. Go. Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. No idea what you're talking about. What? That was Galerius, not you. Oh. He got that from you? I guess you did help me then. I think I have seen that plaque. Sorry I lied. Can't be too careful these days. Head into the caves behind the theater. Turn right, then right again. Oh, and here. You'll need this key. You didn't get that from me. See you around. Anyway, I don't know which god you managed to upset to get your... Oh, that's kind of you to say. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Oh.
Cerberus lifts his drivel head and lets out. Don't believe a word they tell you. Ah, a fellow greetings. I and I must say, leather boot. I have to, and ne. Then and in a city full of Romans, you are asking me because I am Greek. Let me tell you something about Greeks and Romans. My name is Georgios, yes. But the Romans, they do not care. They hear me say Georgios, and they think, ah, he must mean Georgius. Good Roman name. They do this all the time. They see us worshipping Zeus, they copy us, but call him Jupiter. They take Hades and call him Pluto, Persephone, Proserpina. I am flattered that they copy our ideas, but why must they change the names? Do they want credit for making it all up? Do they want to forget where it came from? At first, I pull my hair out. After a while, I give up, and I become Georgius the Roman. I accept the world is Roman. Plus, I have no hair left to pull. But my point is this. If you want to know who stole an old Greek name, look no further than the sticky-fingered Romans. The plague you seek was pilfered from a collection of old Greek relics by none other than Dooley. Uh, he cannot help it. Like a typical Roman, he likes shiny things, especially those that once belonged to my people. And besides, it makes him happy. So I say, let him keep it. I believe he still has it with him, in his cell, just opposite the Temple of Demeter. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. I hear we have you to thank for saving Julia's life. I'm glad you arrived when you did. Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my preference for male company. Hey, nothing gets by you, huh? Sorry, that was mean. Y yes, I like men. And when you grow up in the north as I did in the city of Novio Magus, you expect a bit of hostility. The Batavi are not known for their tolerance. I saw enough friends killed or driven away to know the cost of not keeping your personal affairs to yourself. So I hid who I was for... What was it? Nearly ten years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly, until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world with an assumed name, my openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. Nice of you to say, but not necessary. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. It seems I was wrong. Uh, it's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes, too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. Strange bunch. They insist there's only one God, and that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? If there are any of them here, they won't admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. All I know is, if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. Really? Who is it? 
You went snooping in his place? That was risky. We're lucky you didn't cross any lines. Have you spoken to him about it? I would talk to him myself, but I think that would just inflame the situation. It's probably best if you do it, if you don't mind. Nice to talk to you. It's shiny, isn't it? It makes me happy just looking at it. But if I gave it to you, then I wouldn't have it anymore, and I'd be sad. Um, well... If you get me out of here, then I wouldn't need it anymore because I'd already be happy. Then you could have it, and you'd be happy too. Like, Galerius? He's nice. I like Galerius. He made me a doll and everything. Yeah, Galerius will let me out. Then you can have my plaque and everyone will be happy. Bye bye. 